Welcome to the latest edition of NC Sports Weekly News, where the water sport action never quits. Sailing drag race from New York to Newport, Gryphon Solo 2 and Jeffrey McFarlane.com fight for the lead at the Atlantic Cup. Lucia Metzbauer is on location for Nautical Channel. Michel Bourré and Sally Fitzgibbons win big in Brazil at the ASP Rio Pro. On board ICRA, the magic of tradition, a very special report with senior correspondent Sébastien Destremont. The youngest and the eldest to face the ultimate test for the sensational Kiteboard Youth and Masters World Championships in Sardinia. Slalom stars face 30 plus knots and tough conditions as Brian Lake and Katia Rose take home the 2014 PKRA Surf World Cup in Podersdorf, Austria. NC Sports plunge into the action. Light uh, northeasterly breezes uh, pushed off the Atlantic Cup fleet for the start of Lake 2 in New York. Uh, following Gryphon Solo's two victory in Lake 1 from Charleston, South Carolina, which gave Joe Harris and Patrick O'Connor the early lead, the stakes grew even higher for the rest of the teams as they faced uh, the 230 nautical miles from the Big Apple to Rhode Island. Partnering with this extraordinary double-handed offshore regatta for the American Class 40's Nautical Channel was on location with correspondent Lucia Metzbauer. Well, NC Sports fans, we're now out on the water and within minutes the boats will take off. The crews are ready, focusing on their next leg to Newport. Let's check out the start. The start of an offshore regatta is always packed with emotions, especially here on this atypical metropolitan stage. As the gun went off, the Class 40s quickly eased out of the Hudson River and crossed under the Verrazzano Bridge before setting course first to the southeast uh, to Round Block Island and then back up north to setting their waypoints on Newport. As expected, leg two was a grueling and sleepless rush to the finish line. And this time, Jeffrey McFarlane and Jake Arcand on jeffreymcfarlane.com pushed to the max and were first into Newport, completing the course in just under 30 hours and with an advantage of just one and a half minutes on Dragon, co-skippered by Michael Hennessy and Rob Windsor. This truly turned into offshore match racing as just a few boat lengths uh, separated the two leaders throughout the regatta. The Atlantic Cup will now complete its final chapter with some fully crewed inshore races in Narangaset Bay, which will bring in valuable points for the overall title. Gryphon Solo 2 is uh, still in the lead, but can't afford any mistakes. Nautical Channel's Lucia Metzbauer will bring you the complete rundown on this Atlantic Cup 2014 with leg-by-leg -leg action, interviews and results on the next and very special edition of Top Story. At last, uh, Sally Fitzgibbons broke the spell and captured victory at the Billabong Rio Pro, pushing back reigning ASP world champion Carissa Moore in the final match. The Australian posted the high score throughout the series and did away with Coco Ho and then Tyler Wright, respectively in the quarters and semifinals, while the American Moore cleared her path to the final with wins over Alessa Kison and Lakey Peterson. Carissa posted an early 8.50 in the first heat and immediately put Sally on the ropes, but this time the Aussie responded with three near-perfect backhand turns that backed her at 9.27 for the lead. Medium scores followed and the Hawaiian was always just a step behind Fitzgibbons who closed the file with an authoritative 16.27 to 14.67. With this uh, second place, however, Morris is still on top of the world ranks and is now followed by Sally, Tyler Wright, Steph Gilmore and Lakey Peterson. Michel Bourré confirmed he's a force to be reckoned with this season, bagging his uh, second men's ASP World Tour victory at the Billabong Rio Pro in Brazil. 
Following his previous success in Australia's Margaret River Pro in April, the 29-year-old from Tahiti came on strong for the final rounds here on the one-meter weight at Barraleti Huka. Bure first did away with South Africa's Jordy Smith in the quarters and then matched up with Taj Burroughs for a tough semi-final. The Aussie veteran took an early lead, but Michel countered with an 8.70 to close with a 15.30 to 12.33. The other All-American semi was an even tighter affair as Kelly Slater and Colo Handino faced off in a clash of generations. This time, the 20-year-old prodigy from California pulled off the win of a lifetime, scoring a 14.73 to 14.17 against 42-year-old and multiple world champion Kelly Slater. Entering his first ASP career final, Andino then lost the steam when facing an inspired Bure that dominated the heat with a score of 13.83 to 6.43. A very consistent Kelly Slater still got the front pages here at the Rio Pro first by posting a perfect 10 in round 5 and then again for getting back on top of the world ranking list. More surfing action with highlights and interviews from the ASP Rio Pro coming your way on NC Sports. Allow me to share a weekly selling update exclusively dedicated to an exceptional boat. Welcome to the office. For the past two years, Equal's owner and crews have been planning the 50th anniversary of his famous 12 meetings. It's 50 years of a great story. It's a real privilege to sail on board Icra. No stones are kept unturned for the occasion, and 100 guests are invited on Pork Rolls Island to celebrate a legendary boat for a weekend full of emotions. Ikra for me is a magnificent yacht that just turned 50, a mythical boat, a dream one. Heavy and powerful, these sailing machines are not that easy to handle. She's quite heavy and loads can be huge. It requires the team to be very alert. The onboard historian reminds us of some important dates for this legendary yacht. Some of the key dates are, of course, her birth in 1964, 50 years ago, and the trials in the late 60s with the first ever French America's Cup team. Later, in 1981, Ikra challenges pride for a friendly battle in Saint Tropez. This match racing will then become the very famous New Havre, an event who kicked the start of this kind of yachting in Southern Europe. This competition will become extremely popular and later be renamed Le Voile de Saint-Tropez. In 2005, the new owner decides to renovate this piece of history, mixing together performances and traditions. A new owner and almost a new boat as Icra goes through a complete refit and a full-on restoration. Icra wins in 2010 and 2013 the prestigious Rolex Trophy. I sincerely wish Icra to win a third Rolex. We will gather again next September for the Wild and I'll be sailing on board Icra. The family feeling is palpable on board this exceptional and quite delicate boat. It is such a pleasure to be part of this team. However, if everyone is not at 100%, well, you can't go anywhere, really. Ikra's 50th birthday will remain an unforgettable and emotional celebration for all yachting lovers. Rendezvous next week, same time, same place. Until then, goodbye and fair sailing. Brazil, Canada, France, Switzerland and Russia swept up the gold medals at the Kiteboard Youth and Masters World Championships last weekend in Sardinia. Organized by the Yacht Club Cagliari with the support of the Italian Army, the event gathered 48 of the youngest and oldest athletes from 25 nations on the white sands and turquoise waters of Poeto Beach. It was a promising start with 10 to 15 knots of wind early in the week and then the conditions pumped up to 20-25, adding some good waves for the final. 
Maxine and Ochelle head for you, rivals in the men's under-21 division, packing a streak of wins and taking away three of the four medal races. France also scored big in men's under-18, taking both gold and silver with Mazella and De Ramecourt. Same result for Russia and women's under-18 with Kalinina and Akopova filling the top spots on the podium. Astrid Berza took the gold for Switzerland in the Women's Masters, followed by Ariane Imbert from France with the silver, and Germany's veteran Catherine Borgward in bronze. Winning five regattas and never getting off the podium, Brazil's Wilson Veloso topped a strong tonic Janiak from Poland and Pedro Garijo Velasco from Spain to win the Men's Masters world title. In the Grand Masters division, Canada's Adam Vance grabbed top honors ahead of Italy's Tonon and Spain's Villar. Strong winds up to 39 knots also blew on Lake Neusiedl at Polersdorf for the final day of the 2014 PKRA Surf World Cup. Top-ranked slalom pros made up in Austria for this seven-race showdown and waited it out until midday enjoying some freestyle action until conditions became more manageable. The USA's Brian Lake dominated the series from the get-go, winning four regattas and could afford a DNC in the last race, number seven. Francis Julien Carneur, with two wins, was the nearest contender and closed the three and a half points behind in second place, while South Africa's Oswald Smith took line honors. I've never seen so many people at the beach watching us kite surf and supporting us. So the very first day we were here and racing, there was like 15,000 people at the beach. And I mean, these events in Europe, they're just gigantic compared to anything I've ever seen. Much tighter scores in the women's division with Holland, Slovakia and Germany in a very close fight to the finish. The chase was on Katia Rose and both Bibiana Magaghi and Christine Boninger never gave up as all three athletes closed within three points of each other. I really liked uh, Podersdorf. We had some, uh, some nice uh, easy going days and uh, now some super strong winds. So you never know what to expect on a lake. But uh, yeah, we had super good conditions, so I'm happy with that. Watch out, sub fans, it's not over. The full coverage of the ISA World Championship in Nicaragua is waiting for you in the next edition of the NC Sports Buzz, premiering this Saturday only on Nautical Channel. Plunge into the action with NC Sports.